is KGW News at Sunrise. One of our clients said she didn't even know if a cockpit crew was alive. And these are the kinds of thoughts that were going through people's heads. That is the attorney representing six of the people who were on board the Alaska Airlines flight that lost its door plug in mid-flight last week. They're now suing the maker of that plane. So we're going to have more on their lawsuit against Boeing coming up. And this morning on Sunrise, a fun story. We're talking about the bites that this viral duo is sharing together, all the snacks. That furry guy in the back is Radar, and up front is his human partner, Washington County Sergeant Eamon O'Reilly. They've gone viral on TikTok. More on their claim to fame ahead. Plus. If anybody was listening to Matt Zafino last night, then you know that there's a good chance we might get some nasty weather. Matt Safino last night. How about Rod Hill this morning? <laughs> Rod's, <laughs> Rod's <I'm> not <laughs> nasty, though. <laughs> no, you're not nasty, but the weather we expect to see this weekend is going to be nasty. Do you concur, Rod? Yes, sir. All right, so Rod is going to walk us through the timing of this weekend storm. Uh, this weekend storm coming up, of course, we're also going to talk about area roadways and how they may be impacted uh, by this weekend's weather. Yeah, absolutely. So tons to talk about. Of course, we've got Chris on the roads, Rod on the weather. We can now see the cold Arctic air coming down. So let's show you that on the satellite picture. It says, little bowl carved out right in here, a little arc of the cloud cover. Um, so the leading edge of this Arctic air is going to be hitting the Columbia River. It looks like no later than 7 o'clock this morning. We're already starting to pick up a mixture of uh, rain and depending on where you are, some light snowflakes out there, but this is light precipitation. There are no issues outside of the mountains as far as I am aware right now. I want to show you Seattle's temperature. 23 degrees. They're firmly in the Arctic air. You can see the coloring of the purple right there. We're still at 40, the same in Salem. Kelso is starting to get colder at 34 degrees. This is still a day where the high will be this morning. The temperatures could be down to freezing at noon, 28 degrees at 5 p.m. I think confidence is growing that we will not, will not see enough precipitation day to really cause travel issues down here in the valley. We're mostly looking at snow flurries blowing around a bit or some light snow showers. The precipitation that is going to cause a problem that will stack up in your yard starts uh, early tomorrow morning for some of you. We'll have that coming up in just a bit. Here's Chris, but still below freezing this afternoon. So obviously something to watch out for certain for right now. We've got wet roads. This is I five up near Columbia Boulevard. Your southbound commute is right there and it's rolling along just fine. Happy to tell you that we'll switch gears real quick. Take you over to the Banfield. You can see it's raining out there. Road spray on the roads this morning and over at the Sylvan Hill. Again, traffic rolling along just fine. Guys, the freeway drive into town right now looks good. OK, thank you, Chris. We start our winter weather coverage this morning with people prepping for the storm, hitting grocery stores to stock up. I don't know about you, but I still am going to do that today. <laughs> yeah, I have to go to the grocery store as well. So China Green is going to join us now to talk more about this. China, uh, it looks to me, I just took a peek over your shoulder. It looks like you're putting together a shopping list for us. Well, you definitely need it because <laughs> both of you are waiting until the last minute. Come on, guys. We've been talking about this all week. But yeah, we spoke to Fred Meyer. They gave us a whole list of items that should be in your shopping cart, and they recommend shoppers have three days worth of food on hand in situations like what we're talking about just in case roads get really bad and you're not able to drive. Maybe you don't want to leave. So have some pantry staples like crackers, granola bars. I love popcorn. Also blankets, double A batteries, flashlights or candles just in case the power goes out. And of course, bottled water just in case your pipes freeze. And we talked to a shopper at Fred Meyer in Raleigh Hills yesterday who has been watching our station's forecast this week. She says that that's what encouraged her to stock up on what her family needs before today's storm. I plan like three or four meals and try to get everything I need for those items in case I don't want to go out. I'm kind of afraid to drive in the snow or the ice, so if I have to stay home, I'll be ready. Fred Meyer says that they've seen an uptick in buyers in store and online in preparation for this weekend store. So you guys go to the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, good reminder to get out there. Okay, thank you, China. Okay, we've also checked in with local and state transportation officials about their plans to tackle the snow and ice on the way. Our Devin Haskins is live at the Beaverton Transit Center for us. Good morning, Devin. Hey, good morning. Yeah, so here max lines might be one of your better options when it comes to getting around in the snow when that snow hits later on uh, overnight tonight, tomorrow. If you have to get out and about, they say that's because TriMet says their max lines actually handle the snow much better. So if you have to take a bus, though, to get to one of these, 
They say majority of their buses uh, have drop down chains. They just have to travel like cars and can only go about 25 miles an hour. Um, but uh, they're they're prepared as well. They say they'll be fully staffed over the weekend. Uh, there just may be some delays like you would expect when it comes to the snow weather. We also checked in with PBOT, ODOT and WASHDOT about what they're doing. First, PBOT. The city says they're ready to go. Hundreds of their employees will be running on 12 hour shifts starting today. And if you're wondering where those plows will be, well, there's an interactive map on, map on PBOT's website that tells you where those snow plows will be in real time. It also gives you a look at what roads will have salt applied to them as well. Now, as for ODOT, the state says they'll continue to work through the entirety of the event, although ODOT isn't at full staff right now. But because of additional funding from the governor and lawmakers, they will have enough money to provide overtime in a situation like this, they say. And in Washington, they say they're at 100% staffing levels as well. If we learned anything last year is to make sure that we don't stop until the snow and the ice stops also because things keep coming out of the sky and sometimes they don't stop. We don't stop until that stops. Travelers might experience any combination of rain, ice, snow, slush or serious accumulation um, beginning Friday afternoon well into Saturday. So in terms of preparation, that means our crews are ready we have uh, our cruise staff 24 7 throughout the entire storm all right so right now here in the beaverton transit center it is pouring down rain and uh on the roads those uh, state officials say they haven't applied a magnesium chloride or in other words de-icer because of the rain they say they will be prepared to do so in the event they need to back to you guys. Okay, thank you so much for that update, Devin. Stay with KGW through the next few days. Snow, ice, rain, wind are all on tap for our area. For the latest forecast anytime, check out KGW Plus, our website, or download the KGW app. Passengers who are on board the Alaska flight that lost a door plug in mid-flight last week have filed a class action lawsuit against Boeing. The lawsuit names six passengers and a passenger's family member as the plaintiffs. That plane, of course, took off from Portland last Friday. It was five minutes later when investigators say the door plug blew off. The lawsuit claims Boeing delivered that plane to Alaska Airlines without properly securing the plug. And an attorney for the plaintiffs described what they experienced that night as a wide awake nightmare. One of our clients said she didn't even know if the cockpit crew was alive. And these are the kinds of thoughts that were going through people's heads. Finally, Boeing is waking up to the fact that whatever it's been doing lately, <laughs> whether it's respect to the max or their production uh, methods uh, or lack of quality control, they need to own up to it. They need to look it straight in the eye and they need to stop it. That is Seattle-based attorney Daniel Lawrence. So the next step is the court deciding who all will be included as part of this class in the lawsuit. Any potential damages will be decided at trial. Boeing, meanwhile, is declining to comment on the litigation. The FAA is now investigating if Boeing failed to make sure the door plug was properly designed and safe to use. The agency sent a letter to Boeing laying out its concerns, noting what it called additional discrepancies on MAX 9s. So both Alaska and United Airlines have found loose hardware on other door plugs on grounded jets. Here's what the transportation secretary said when asked if he's concerned. What I'll say is that every plane that they deliver to an airline, every plane that goes into the skies needs to be 100% safe and they need to be able to demonstrate that. The FAA is giving Boeing 10 days to respond with more information about the door plugs. All right, before we get to Rod and his full winter weather forecast for this week, and we want to remind you that coming up after sunrise this morning, starting at 830, as a matter of fact, you can hop online and check out another winter weather live stream with both Rodney Hill and Christopher McGinnis. Am I getting all this information right, Rob? Because uh, the last time we did this on Wednesday, this was hugely popular. A lot of people tuned in. It was huge. I was surprised we had people flying into the city to watch oh, this. Geez. They could have watched uh, it on their computers. Yeah, you know? you wow. can watch it wherever you are in the world because again, it will be online, that world wide web. <laughs> Uh, so today we finally have detail that I think overall is, is fairly confident in many regards. Let's get you going. Much of the area reminder on this map is uh, colored in some sort of a winter watch warning for snow. 
low. We have wind. The, a reminder, the storm watch, which technically starts at noon from the Weather Service. In terms of precip, the winter storm will be tomorrow in terms of precip. But the cold comes in today, and this does include areas all the way off of the coast. All right. We have light snow showing up around Longview, and we're starting to see a mixture of some a wintry mix, but still mostly rain down low in the valley. It's all light stuff. I still think, I mean, the wettest precip model there is gives Portland a tenth of an inch of total moisture today. Most models, it's more like a trace to 500. It's going to be snow flurries. It's going to be uh, light snow showers. Do we have enough to cover the ground by the end of the day? Maybe. Maybe not. It's just going to be light stuff. So I don't really see traveling overall being a big issue uh, throughout the daytime hours. Today. I do want to point out on this map, you see 11 in Pimentel, but there's 23 in Seattle. So that's the cold air marching down. There's Kelso 34. Cold air hits the Columbia River around 7 o'clock this morning. It's 40 right now out of PDX. Here are the headlines. Uh, this is for tomorrow. So today it's cold. It's some light snow. East winds start to pick up. The stronger east winds tomorrow. Portland for Saturday, a snow sleet mix. Accumulate. This is still high, this is still highly in question how much because we're not sure how much of it's going to be sleet, how much of it's going to be snow. And keep in mind that the gorge that's going to continue to blow in really dry air that's going to eat a, up a lot of the moisture that the weather models are putting out. So anywhere from we have a few inches on the ground, it's going to be snowing or a sleet mix much of the afternoon. So we've got to cover the ground with something. To as much as maybe there are some pockets that pick up heavier amounts of six, seven, eight inches. East winds will be gusting 20 to 40, 50 on the east side, potentially zero to plus 10 degree wind chills. Wow. And then the storm in Saturday night. Different world when you drop down into the uh, Salem, Albany, Eugene areas. Heavy. This is mostly ice. Heavy sleet slash freezing rain. Best chance for freezing rain looks to be more toward Eugene. Uh, heavy icing in some areas. Ice depths, especially Eugene. Could be an inch and a quarter, and maybe there are some outputs similar to this for you folks down in Albany. If true, this is the type of stuff that knocks out power for days, especially in remote areas, for days and days before the power companies get you up and going again. Northeast winds, not as bad, 10 to 20, and again, storm in Saturday night. Futurecast movies, this is light stuff today. This is light snow in Portland. Eventually, rain turns to some light snow in Salem. Could be rain all day down in Eugene. This is uh, overnight tonight. We're starting to see the salmon colors ice. And then here's tomorrow morning. Here's the icing, Eugene to Salem. Snow in Portland to a sleet mix much of the day. Here we are, 930 in the evening, and then it's all gone just like that. And here come your seven-day numbers. We fall to 30 today. We're 18 to 22 all day tomorrow with those bitterly cold wind chills. Sunday's dry. We don't really see a lot of warming until we get into Tuesday afternoon. And that is your update for right now. Okay, thank you.